It's August 7th, 2017, and it's time to review five of the most outrageous, infuriating, or just plain baffling things that have happened lately. It's your face palm five. Let's count them down. Number one, Justice Department targets affirmative action. Last week, the United States Justice Department issued an internal announcement that it was about to begin investigating race-based discrimination in college and university admissions. Sound like good news? Yeah? Did you forget who the Attorney General is? According to the New York Times, this new anti-discrimination operation will most likely focus on admissions programs that prioritize students from historically marginalized groups on the basis that such programs unfairly disadvantage white students. The Times also reports that this operation will be directed by political appointees of the Trump administration, not members of the Justice Department's Educational Opportunities Section, which would ordinarily handle cases like these. So you know those shitheads who always complain that any attempt to correct for the discrimination experienced by, say, people of color is wrong because it is discriminatory toward white people? They're in charge of the Justice Department now. Which we knew already, but still. Hey, speaking of white supremacists in the White House, did you hear about number two, Stephen Miller, Statue of Liberty historian. Team Trump is looking to follow up its stunningly successful healthcare reform effort <laughs> by reshaping immigration policy. Let's hope their luck holds. At a press briefing last week, White House senior policy advisor and special assistant to the president on dog whistle racism, Stephen Miller had a testy exchange with CNN reporter Jim Acosta about new immigration legislation backed by Trump, which would favor English speaking and highly educated applicants over poorer, less skilled applicants who are not yet fluent in English. Acosta questioned whether the new proposal was in keeping with the traditional view of American immigration, a view most famously expressed in the Emma Lazarus poem that hangs inside the pedestal upon which the Statue of Liberty stands. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Miller wasn't impressed by Acosta's question, which Miller said revealed Acosta's cosmopolitan bias, or by Emma Lazarus's poem, which Miller said was not originally part of the Statue of Liberty. Miller is correct in that Lazarus's poem wasn't displayed on the statue's pedestal until 1903, 17 years after the statue was unveiled. But Lazarus wrote the poem titled The New Colossus in 1883, three years before the statue was unveiled as part of a fundraising effort to pay for the construction of the statue's pedestal. So the poem and its vision of the Statue of Liberty as the mother of exiles and of the United States as a place of refuge for people who had nowhere else to go have been associated with the statue for longer than the statue has stood in New York Harbor. Whether Stephen Miller or the white nationalists who applauded his response to Jim Acosta like it or not. I can think of no more beautiful description of what America can and should be than Emma Lazarus's The New Colossus. It doesn't surprise me that Stephen Miller doesn't appreciate it. How could he? Men like him don't understand things like mercy, compassion, or generosity. Those are just weaknesses to be exploited, not virtues of a strong, powerful nation. And men like Miller are currently in charge of our executive branch. I'm an atheist, but God help us. Number three, South Carolina gubernatorial candidate is proud of the Confederacy. <laughs> this is turning into the racism special, isn't it? Catherine Templeton, Republican candidate for governor of South Carolina, took part in a candidate forum last week and responded to a question about recent efforts across the South to remove Confederate monuments by saying that she was proud of the Confederacy. Quote, you can't rewrite history, she said, adding, I don't care whose feelings it hurts. She also said that the people of South Carolina today were standing on the shoulders of giants. She left out that those giants were standing on the backs of slaves. Like she said, you can't rewrite history. Number four, Scaramucci, I hardly knew he. On July 21st, Anthony Scaramucci was appointed the new White House communications director. 
on July 31st, 10 days later, he was fired. But oh, what a 10 days it was. Press Secretary Sean Spicer resigned rather than work with Scaramucci. On July 26, while talking on the phone with a reporter from The New Yorker, Scaramucci threatened to fire the entire White House communications staff if the reporter didn't reveal who was leaking information to the press. He also accused White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus of being a leaker and, quote, a fucking paranoid schizophrenic. Two days later, Priebus resigned and was replaced as Chief of Staff by John Kelly. Three days after that, Trump, on Kelly's recommendation, fired Scaramucci. Every so often, someone comes along who is such an obnoxious asshole that everyone knows they won't be around for long. Like a shooting star, for an instant, they flare up brighter than anything else in the sky and tell a reporter on the record that Steve Bannon sucks his own cock, and then just like that, they're gone. And now it's time for the segment devoted to some of the other things Donald Trump has done lately to disgrace the presidency and embarrass and or endanger the United States and the rest of the world lately. It's number five, the further misadventures of Lord Dampnut. Please keep in mind, as always, the following is not a complete list. He gave a speech at the Boy Scout Jamboree, during which he bragged at length about his Electoral College victory, of course, complained that the media wouldn't report on the size of the crowd, and said he didn't want to talk about politics in front of the Boy Scouts, then spent most of the speech talking about politics, including threatening to fire his Health and Human Services Secretary, who was in attendance, if health care reform didn't pass the Senate. The next day, he told the Wall Street Journal that the head of the Boy Scouts called him afterwards to say that it was the greatest speech anyone had ever made to them, which was a lie. The Boy Scouts and the White House have since confirmed there was no such call. He addressed a group of law enforcement officials and encouraged them to physically mistreat suspects they arrested. He retweeted an article about rising health insurance premiums that attributes the rising premiums to Trump's own policies. He told members of his Bedminster, New Jersey golf club that the White House was, quote, a real dump, then denied it and accused the magazine that reported the quote, which was Golf Magazine, of being fake news. And he posted a video to his personal Facebook page, hosted by his daughter-in-law, which touted his many recent accomplishments that have been ignored by the fake news media. The video was less than two and a half minutes long. All hail Lord Dampnut. That's five. Speak out, act out, resist, and look after each other. Hey folks, hope you found this one worthwhile. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Steve Shives to become a patron of this channel for as little as $1 a month. And believe you me, those $1 a month pledges really help out and really add up. But if you pledge $5 a month or more, you can take advantage of some cool extra perks that I have to offer, including for those who pledge $5 a month or more, a shout out at the end of the Facepalm 5, just like these folks who have become $5 or more per month patrons since the last Facepalm 5 video, Joe Taylor. Thank you, Joe. The Wayward Willis Podcast. Thank you, Wayward Willis Podcast. And Jareth Quinn Asher. Thank you, Jareth. Thanks to all of my patrons at any level. Thanks to all of you for all of your support in whatever form it takes. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.